was a need in our community. Um, Lucy, if you could go to the next slide, that would be awesome. So as I was, I was talking about, you know, we, we saw this, this dynamic of demand increasing while supply was decreasing, and, and that has continued. Um, I have some kind of more up-to-date numbers that, that are even on this slide. The Franciscan Community Development Center in Fairview, which we anticipated would be hard hit, it's one of the more needy communities in Bergen County, they went from serving 30 families, then to 478 families. They're, they're now serving 1,897 people um, every single month, uh, every single week, actually. Um, the Park Ridge Food Pantry. Um, Park Ridge used to serve 30 families, and now every week is serving 212. Uh, Ramsey, as we were talking about before, was serving 20 prior to the pandemic. Their numbers are actually even more higher than when we made this graph. They're up to 500 people that they're serving, 500 individuals, about 200, a little less, less than 150 families. Englewood Office of Concern was at 456 prior to the pandemic. They're now serving upwards of 1,000. Norwood was three was 30, now they're up to 70. Uh, and most importantly, and, and for our reference, Jewish Family Services was serving 75 families prior to the pandemic and is now serving 430 families. Um, so when you talk, when you think about that increase, it's really pretty significant. Can you go to the next slide, Lucy? So we in Bergen County have a population of just shy of a million. Um, prior to this pandemic, our, our food insecurity levels were estimated at approximately 60,000 people. We have seen an increase of 71% in Bergen County, which means 43,000 people in Bergen County are newly food insecure. And food insecure means you don't know where your next meal is coming from, or you don't have the ability to access adequate nutrition to meet your family's needs. And, and how that trickles down to our children, I think is one of the most kind of impactful and, and problematic pieces of this, especially with so many kids who are at virtual school, to be able to have focus, to be able to, you know, it, it's very hard to focus when your stomach's growling. It's very hard to focus if you're getting a diet of mac and cheese and Pop-Tarts from your food pantry. And so, you know, part of this conversation that we've had is not only just getting folks food, but getting people adequate nutrition to be able to live a healthy lifestyle. And that is part of, I think, where we're trying to shift this, kind of have a sea change in the way that we approach food insecurity throughout the county. Let's see if we go to the next. So just, you know, we, I talked about the formation of the, the food security task force. One of the first things that we were able to do, um, I have a tremendously supportive and amazing county executive uh, and, and James Tedesco immediately when I, put forward this idea of forming this task force, not only said yes, but gave us $2 million worth of CARES funding to shore up an infrastructure of actually, you know, one of the things that was driving me crazy at the beginning was that a food pantry might get a really great donation. And if they didn't have a need for it, they would, some of them would donate it to a local restaurant or it would not, it would go, go to waste. So first it was setting up an ability for our food pantries to talk to each other and to collaborate and to realize that they're in it together. Um, so now we kind of have a system where if somebody gets a really great donation of let's say milk, they'll put it up, hey, we need 200 gallons of this milk, but we have 500, who needs the next 300? And the other food pantries will pipe in and, and be able to disseminate that more broadly throughout our pantry system. And it's like creating a system has actually been um, sometimes it's felt like herding cats because at the outset of this, many of our food pantries didn't even have computers. Um, so getting them um, into the 20th century, let alone the 21st century, was our first uh, cause of action. We made sure that we got everyone a uh, computer so that they have the ability to not only communicate with us, but not only collect the data that is necessary, um, but also to be able to talk to each other and talk to the residents who that they're serving. Um, part of this was also making sure that we equip them with the infrastructure to deal in a long-term way. I mean, we're already, I can't believe that this is the year mark, right? Like this is when the world started to shut down and we're already dealing with this for a year. We know based upon data from the 2008 recession that the peak in food insecurity was in that situation was two years after the beginning of the recession. 
And it took 10 years to get back to pre-2008 recession levels of hunger in the community. So as we're equipping for this marathon, as we're making sure that we're kind of prepared for the long haul, setting up sustainable models and setting up the ability for our, our food pantry partners to not just access canned goods that are going to create the next generation of folks with hypertension and diabetes, but to equip them with the ability to accept donations of perishable goods. And that was a huge um, focus of setting up our infrastructure to not just deal with emergency food supplies, but also to make sure that we're equipped to handle what's coming. And so with this CARES funding, we not only purchased over 25 refrigerators and freezers for our different pantries. Um, we helped them get things like boxes, which you, you know, we couldn't get over how much money our food pantries were spending on boxes. Um, but we, you know, it was also getting things like there was a, you know, one of our food pantries needed a, a shrink wrapper or a pallet jack to move the, the, the pallets that were coming in. Um, so it was, it was assessing what infrastructure needs were, were prevalent and how we could address them in a, in a long-standing way. Um, one of the investments we mentioned before we all began about table to table, we, uh, we invested in an app, which we're really excited that they're going to launch called 412 Food Rescue, which will ultimately connect restaurants who have extra meals at the end of the night with a volunteer who can set up to deliver those meals and get them to folks who are in need. So not only does it give the restaurant a charitable deduction, but it gets the food uh, out of the garbage cans and out of our waste stream and into people who it can benefit and who, it, who can um, you know, connect with those resources. Um, we, you know, we, can, we partner very significantly with Community Food Bank because that's a sustainable long-term way. They're, they're making huge investments in making sure we're not only just getting perishable items, but also healthy food, uh, carrots, potatoes, onions, things that our food, the, our food pantry recipients really need and uh, have long shelf lives, but also have nutritional value. Um, we are working really hard uh, on, on partnering and making sure not only Bergen Volunteer Center, but also Jewish Federation's Volunteer Center is connected to what's going on and so that they can be of service and pitch in to help and fill the gaps where some of our retirees had previously um, been stepping up and, and, and helping. We, we're starting to collaborate with our hospital communities. We just ran a pilot with Inglewood Hospital that will help educate uh, it, it educates those who are receiving food from pantries on how they could stretch that box to be a little healthier, healthy meals that they can cook from the pantry um, supplies that they're receiving and how to stretch those meals a little bit further for their nutritional and, and improve their nutritional value. But the, the ongoing conversations with their hospital is going to be something that's continuing as far as how we deal with food allergies and how we deal with uh, overall health within our community um, because so much of the food that we receive is connected to long-term health outcomes. And one of the programs I'm really excited about is creating this next generation of advocates and our next generation of ambassadors. And right now we're working on a program with the Bergen County um, Technical Schools to kind of, to get a box, see what the recipe, see how they can stretch that box to last a week and come up with recipes that they then will share with the those who are receiving these um, donations from the from in the pantry community, and what that does is it a it gives them some folks some creative new ways of maybe re envisioning what they can do with the food that they're receiving week after week after week, but as I said, it creates individuals who are vested and who understand food insecurity in a little different way going forward. Go on to the next slide. So one of the things that we put together pretty quickly was this interactive food pantry map. Um, and if you go onto the food security website, you can click on a food pantry and figure out, uh, first of all, where you can access food, what their hours are, how you can, how you can obtain food, um, but also how, what they accept as far as donations and where you, you know, where you could donate within your own community. We've been really focusing, I'm a little bit of a data geek. Um, and so we have also been building out the story map, which should go live by definitely by the end of March, um, which also collects data of uh, unemployment data, SNAP benefit data, which is formerly known as food stamps, and uh, free and reduced lunch information 
so we can kind of get a, a, a picture of what the needs are in our community. And it was really interesting, as I mentioned to you before, that the, the food pantry in Park Ridge was, has been slammed. We couldn't really understand why until we started to layer that information in and realized that Montvale is one of the hardest hit communities by unemployment in Bergen County. You know, we still have 174,000 people here in this county who are, are, are currently unemployed. So that all of a sudden started to make sense that, you know, and, and that then gives us a preview to be able to anticipate what our pantry needs are going to be um, or where our outreach needs to change. You know, one of the biggest goals of the task force is not only to get food into people's cars, but to connect those who are receiving food to the services that they might need. You know, food insecurity is a symptom. Folks might need to go to the job center to get to update their resume or get some additional skills or they might need mental health support or affordable child care or, you know, alternative to domestic violence counseling. So, so many other causes of food insecurity are really what we're trying to, to solve. So it's, it's not just getting food on the shelves or food into the cars, but it's getting people the services that they need that can help lift them out of the situation that they're in and more holistically address the situation so that we can kind of move to a different to a different place where they need less support from our food pantries. Um, Lucien, can you go to the next one? So one of the things I'm really excited and wanted to talk to you about, and the timing of this, this chat couldn't have been more perfect, but last week we found out a Health Barn had made an application based upon their Feeding the Front Lines program that many of you may have been aware of, where they were raising money to buy meals from restaurants that would support our frontline healthcare workers. And based upon that model, they were eligible for this grant uh, from the uh, um, economic development from New Jersey EDA, which would support our restaurants and keep them in business, um, but have these meals allocated to those who are using food pantries and who are food insecure. And so out of the blue, they were awarded a million dollars, um, which will be providing 100,000 meals between now and the end of May, between March 8th and March 31st. And we are, can, obviously, listen, the needs in Ridgewood are significant. I mean, we have, um, you know, 156 residents at Ridgecrest who are in affordable housing in Ridgewood and are, you know, running short every single month and utilize, really utilizing their food pantry significantly. But we also have, uh, you know, 219 people in Ridgewood who are receiving SNAP benefits. We have, um, you know, at least, we, you know, one, one and a half percent of students who are eligible for free reduced lunch and that's based upon pre-pandemic numbers. Um, but basically, you know, Ridgewood SSA is serving about 260 households per month. So, you know, this isn't in, in Ridgewood, but this million dollars and this meal program is and the amount of meals in this window is going to enable us to serve pantries throughout Bergen County. And so kind of one of my calls to action is, is to have, um, is to, there's this really amazing opportunity to be able to volunteer in a way that's socially distant, where you pick up the meals from the restaurant and drop them off at food pantries so that they can then disseminate them throughout their communities. So I put that out there as food for thought for later, as, as ways we can all get involved. Let's see if you go to the next. I think that's the last slide, right? Yeah, so you can turn off the slide presentation now. Um, so now I get to see more people's faces as, as we chat. Um, so, so the bottom line is the need is significant. And most importantly, I think what's really problematic is that people believe that this is a Patterson problem or a Jersey City problem or someplace not Bergen County, one of the top 40 wealthiest counties in the country's problem. Um, yet we have almost 104,000 people in our community, neighbors, who have significant needs and who are making really hard choices between whether they pay for their health insurance or whether they put food on their table. And, and the, the fact is, is that we need to create community around this. And it's something that we can do in isolation. It's something we can support. I will tell you the Sikudwara in Glenrock, right around the corner from us, they are cooking, it started at like 100 meals, then it was 500 meals. They're now cooking 2,500 meals a week that go out to different organizations to provide vegetarian healthy meals to, throughout the community. And they are subbing out the work 
So you can go on to sign up genius and, and say, I'm willing to cut 50 pounds of onions and, and then contribute to those meals through that, you know, exterior food prep. You can, you know, and, and that is one of the, I just thought such an innovative way of involving the community and being able to do it from the safety and security of your home, but still contributing and, and being a meaningful part. I mean, listen, the, the dollars are important. The, the, the canned donations are important. The energy is though important too. And so, you know, however you can be involved, whether it's spreading the word that this is an issue and a problem, whether it's raising, I, I'll tell you one little anecdote. I, there's a, a small business in my community. It's called Country Cafe, lives in Franklin Lakes. And some, one of the moms put up a GoFundMe page because she was having a hard time paying her heating bill. And I reached out to her to let her know that there was this county small business grant program. We gave out almost $60 million worth of small grants, uh, grants to small businesses to help them stay afloat during this pandemic. And I, I, made the, I made, wanted to make her aware of this. And she said, oh, if I get that grant, then I can take the money that I got from the GoFundMe page and provide meals for folks at Oasis. Oasis is a wonderful organization. They do so much good work in Patterson. But the fact that she didn't realize that less than a mile down the road in Ramsey, there's 500 people who are hungry, that she didn't realize that in Oakland, there's a food pantry that's serving over 90 families, that she didn't realize that this is a problem that her neighbors were struggling with, is exactly what we're trying to combat. It's to realize, listen, you know, I see Nadine on this line. I see other people who I've cooked with for as we've provided meals at the homeless shelter to realize that um, you know, the food insecurity piece has always been something I know we as a synagogue have embraced and, and, and it's part of our tikkun alum and it's part of our heart and soul. Um, I think I inherited this need to feed the, the world from my grandmother. You know, it's, um, it's we all wanna, wanna help and fix. And this is something that we all can be a part of, whether it is you know, providing the sweat equity, whether it is writing the check, whether it's just raising awareness and, and, and bringing to attention, you know, not just that, um, what the needs are, but I think, you know, so many people think, oh, that, that leftover can of like sun-dried tomatoes in the back of my cabinet, that's what I'm gonna donate to the food pantry. The fact of the matter is our food pantries need apples. They need celery. They need eggs, they need dairy, they need meat, they need protein. There are so many, you know, if we are going to, create this next generation in a way that is healthy, we need to be looking at, at how we are feeding those social determinants of health. You know, it's, um, and there's so many different components of it, right? It's like, if you have celiac disease and you can't get food that is, is good for you at your food pantry, you basically have a choice between being hungry or being sick. And so that, those are the, the, these are the areas that we're exploring with the Food Task Force and how we can do that more comprehensively. And, you know, we always say it takes a village. This is one where with all of our engagement, with all of our energy, we definitely can make a difference. And also by seeing this and, and talking about this and discussing this, we also take away the stigma. I think for so many people, they don't want to admit that they're struggling. There, there's an embarrassment about coming forward for help. Um, there was a study done prior to this pandemic about SNAP benefits, which they said is food stamps. Bergen County left $24 million worth of food stamp eligibility on the table. People who were eligible to receive assistance who did not come forward for that. And, and some of it, I believe, is there's a technology piece that some of our seniors may, may or may not be comfortable with. Only 52% of eligible seniors were receiving food stamps. But I think that at the core, there's also this, I don't, I don't, I don't want people to know. I don't wanna, I don't, that, that's not me. That doesn't fit. And so there's a shame associated with it. So the more that people realize that they're not alone, the more people realize that this is, that their community cares, that there's people who are there to support them throughout all of this. The, the, the less shame there is, the more connectivity we can have to help people lift themselves out of the circumstances they're finding themselves in. So like one of the things we just finished that just went out today, I believe, 
Right, Lucine? Um, we just completed this brochure of 20 to 28 pages of other services that folks at the front line and the food pantries can refer people to. So that it's not just giving them the food, it's finding out what their real true needs are and how we can connect them to those needs and to those to, to agencies and organizations who can help meet those needs. And, and you know, it's there are so many people here, and I think that's been kind of a silver lining for me through this is there are so many people with such full hearts who are rolling up their sleeves to help. Um, the goal of this task force is just to try and get them coordinated and rowing in the same direction. Um, and so I guess, you know, what I'm eager to discuss here with you all today is kind of how we as a synagogue can continue to be part of that conversation. I know we do the big push from a zone at the Jewish holidays, um, you know, there are so many who need in within our community. September is, is Hunger Action Month. I think there's a real opportunity for engagement, uh, both from our shul and from other entities throughout the community uh, on, on how we address that, how we shine that spotlight a little bit brighter on this issue. Um, and, and I think there's an opportunity for all of us to kind of continue to, to rope people in to help to help. Um, and I'm happy to help point people in directions, um, but I kind of want to open this up for conversation and not just to be a one way dial, you know, a one way monologue here. So, so why don't you guys kind of, um, whoever wants to jump in, um, I'd be really interested to kind of see where, where you see the possibilities for us to engage uh, as a community, uh, as part of the Jewish community here. It'd be great if uh, people would just identify themselves, because I don't think Tracy can see all 30 screens at the same time, um, and just who you are, and then feel free to ask a question. So unmute and fire away if you have a question for, uh, for Tracy, whether there's a question or you're seeking information. Tracy, hi, it's Tamara Freeman. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Tamara. Yeah, um, it's, it's great to see you, and um, thank you for giving us this program and this insight, and thank you for all of your good work. Um, my brother um, is in the food industry. He's, he's a chef and he was laid off and he's using this time to work at City Harvest in Queens. And he said it's the best job he's ever had. That, he, I, that's, first of all, that's a beautiful way to use your talents and your skills to help others. Right. That's, that's how he feels too. And he said the people around him, um, they, they remind me of, of you actually. They're very um, civic minded. They have enormous hearts. They want to give their time and their skills and their energy. And there's this esprit de corps, which is so appealing to him. And he said the city harvest in Queens started as like a small storefront. And he said, now it's the size of the Costco. And the donations that, that come in are of the highest quality, produce, meats, all the things that you were mentioning, the quality of food that people really, really need. And I'm wondering if you're familiar with this model and if this is something that might come to Bergen County at some time. So City Harvest does a lot of um, food reclamation also. That's a piece of it. And, and Table to Table does some of that here in Bergen County. So if a supermarket has, you know, excess that they don't believe that they're going to sell, they'll reach out to a Table to Table. Um, to give you an example, like Demarest Farms, I love to give companies that help us shout outs, but Demarest Farms was so generous this past fall. We did a, I did a little Facebook campaign of like, you know, pick one for the pantry kind of thing of if you're going apple picking rather than making applesauce that your children are never going to eat, pick one of the bags for your family and one to donate to your local food pantry and put a li the links. Um, and when I did that, Jason Digis from, from Demarest reached out and said, hey, I'll give you two crates, which is like 2,400 pounds of, of apples and um, at the beginning of the season and another two at the end. And so, you know, he's been so generous. And I think that's, there are some, you know, there are some little political things that go on, meaning a lot of the organizations like Target and Acme and Walgreens and others, 
donate back to Community Food Bank of New Jersey and then it gets to there and then they come back and turn it around and get it to us. And it, to me, it seems really wasteful. And I'm trying to iron some of that out where rather than increasing our carbon footprint and schlepping it across the state only to come back to us, maybe we can just cut out the middleman. Um, but but my point is there are so many folks who do want to help. And, and that that being said, like, you know, I put it out to this crowd of, you know, if you know someone who is in the fruit and vegetable distribution business, or if you know folks who have those excesses in their um, in their business model, you know, Jason takes anything that he that is soon to expire and gets it to the food pantry in, 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 in Park Ridge. Um, that's where his relationships are but we're, we're trying to set this up in a lot of different communities. Um, Reed Academy, which my, my nephew went to, uh, started a, a hydroponic vertical farm as a profit center to fund their adult autism programming. And when the country club stopped having need, you know, needing microgreens, um, they had a lot of leftover lettuce and spinach and, and, and microgreens. And they reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to donate once a month, 180 heads of lettuce. Um, and so we connected them with a food pantry partner uh, so that they can have, so, you know, in Tina, in Hackensack, they can have a steady stream of healthy food. And, and, you know, listen, we're trying to set best practices. And so if there's like nutritionists, you know, who want to give their talents and time to, you know, educating folks about um, how, how to make better choices, you know, it, it's, it's kind of bewildering, you know, for the last nine years that I've been a uh, it was a freeholder, but now it's a county commissioner. There's been identified, there's this thing called the Community Health Improvement Plan. Um, and they've identified obesity and diabetes in minority and at risk populations as a huge problem in our county. And it's hard to think about you being obese and being hungry at the same time, but they're so interlinked. There's so much data that talks about, you know, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, you tend to overeat. When you only have access to McDonald's or pasta and you're not having the balanced nutritional diet, what that does and how that feeds into both diabetes and obesity. So my, my point is there's so many skills and so many talents that we can use, just like your brother is putting his talents to use. If anyone has Think, you know, whether it's marketing, whether it's, um, you know, context within the food industry, whether there's, there's so many ways to make an impact. Um, and I think that part of what I'm trying to do is suck as many of those people in to be part of that conversation um, and figure out ways that we can engage various different communities and being part of the solutions. So, but your brother's awesome. I'm glad he's doing that and I'm glad he's finding meaning. Other questions? While I've got that pause that for a second, um, you ran through an enormous amount of material in your presentation. And as a synagogue or something in the greater Ridgewood area or in a 20 mile radius, you have a list of food banks or places that need volunteer help that we could make more of it easily available uh, and get that out. That is such a great question, Bob, because yes, on the Bergen County Food Security uh, Task Force Facebook page, we constantly are posting ongoing food drives, ongoing volunteer opportunities. The Bergen Volunteer Center has a link that if you go onto the Bergen Volunteer Center website, there is a food security tab and you can find out all the volunteer opportunities there are. But right now, the Ridgewood Chamber of Commerce needs drivers for this meal program. I mean, I am... I can't tell you how exciting it is when I get to call a food pan, you know, they're, they're calling on me from this task force to help them find where the hungry people are. Um, and unfortunately, I know all too well the communities where there's, there's folks who are struggling. And we're gonna be able to help serve people throughout the whole county and get them, you know, a hot meal every week uh, from a restaurant, which is, you know, A, a mental health lift because it's something that's different and not the, the, the same can of soup that they've gotten from the food bank for the last nine months. Um, it's, you know, it, it's a wonderful way to not only support our restaurants, but to support those who are really struggling. And so, I, you know, I'm definitely doing a pitch to reach out to the Chamber of Commerce and, and volunteer if you have the ability to do so, to be a meal schlepper. Um, and, and, and that is, um, you know, some of them are gonna go to communities that are close by, Paramus, uh, Dumont, others are gonna go to Fairview and Garfield and Teaneck and Englewood, um, but it's gonna be really, pervasive and it's going to be something that these folks can rely upon for the next 10 weeks that they're going to have a meal every week for their whole family. 
Okay, well, again, if I, you can just uh, narrow that down for me to a few, I will see if I can distribute that on a more regular basis. Um, going to a variety uh, of websites is a good thing. But... Apple Talk, how about that? Say it again? I said, I can even send you a blurb to put into the newsletter, the Temple Newsletter. I, I'm, 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 that's the best thing I could think of. Okay, so Lucene, let's, let's put that on our to-do list. This to I, All right, Lucene, uh, fire that to me. You've got my email address. I look forward to getting that and promoting that on a regular basis. I think that's something that, uh, we, as you said, we do with Mazone and we talk and, and we have uh, our, our members who volunteer as well, but I think all of us need to uh, recognize it's just not an occasion, this needs to happen. There has to be some continuity to it. And unless we're reminded, other things will come to the top. So I hope forward we and can do that's that. exactly my fear, Bob, and that's that you hit on this point exactly, is that we as people are crows, right? Like the next shiny issue, the next shiny mm -hmm. object. Mm -hmm. This isn't going away. This coattail yeah. of this pandemic is gonna be here in our community for a decade. And these organizations are going to be struggling under the weight of that for a really long time. I, just a, a little, uh, one other plug for Jewish Family Services. I don't know if any of you have been to their building in Teaneck. The parking is abysmal. It is, you know, it is horrifying. They have taken to a model also of delivering their care packages throughout the community so that there's less of a impact on their ridiculously horrifying parking situation. So that's another like socially distant way in the long term that there's, you know, if you if you want to help in a Jewish way, only, you know, if that's where you're, you're motivated, um, 430 families. And I think that's one of the things that I just also want to underscore. Like, I think what this pandemic showed us is that so many families are one emergency away from real struggle. And I'm really worried about once, like the foreclosure, of, uh, the, pro the prohibition against foreclosure and eviction is lifted, how families are going to be digging out of the hole that they've found themselves in throughout this. You know, not many people, you know, can deal with a year of being unemployed or to deal with even three months of being unemployed or deal with even a refrigerator breaking or, you know, it, the, the level of emergency might be different, but we are all one emergency whether it's a healthcare crisis or whatever, from, from struggling and needing our neighbors to help us and help support us. So, um, you know, we, we can make a difference. We can make an impact. And as we're kind of rebuilding this civic infrastructure, as we're kind of emerging from our, our, our isolation, I think this is an important time for us to remember that we, we have this responsibility to fix our world, right? We have this responsibility to Ooh. support our neighbor. And, and there's plenty of opportunity. So I am happy to be a conduit. I'm happy to connect the dots. If you know of people who want to be part of this, please just, uh, Lucene, could you do me a favor and stick in, my, in the chat uh, my email as well as my cell phone. Um, you know, many, many of you have it already, but feel free to reach out to me. If you have a thought, a brainstorm, something we can engage in for Hunger Action Month, that will in, in September that can help draw awareness to this ways we can you know engage our kids in being part of this process. I just got this amazing email that there's these two boys who are making lunches in Teaneck. Uh, you know, there's this one girl in Dumont who's been like selling these little trinkets for St. Patrick's Day that goes to fund food pantry. She's ten years old and she came up with this idea. So you know, to see and and impart on our kids that they can be part of these solutions empowers them in that long term way of of civic engagement, which I'm, I'm all for. So um, are there any other questions? I'm sorry, I've been babbling for so long. I could talk for like six hours about food insecurity, but I even more importantly, talk about how, how our community needs to heal and how part of that healing process is what we do for each other. Anything? Okay, well, we got the email address and phone number on the chat so people can take care of that. By the way, if you can shoot something to Jessica Siegel, who is our ninja and uh, the Jewish high school, Bergen County High School of Jewish Studies, I think if they also had some information um, as a part of their, um, I think it needs to get into the minds of children, and not maybe not at the youngest age, but certainly through the high school level, that they need to be part of the process. And it has to be not, as I said, not an occasion. So Jessica would be the person to get that information and have Ninja become a part of this and see this as a sustaining part 
of their yeah, obligation. I want to put one more other little seed out there is that food stamps don't only cover food. They don't cover things like Tampax. They don't cover things like diapers. They don't cover things like toothpaste or cleaning products. And our food pantries need all of those things as well. So, you know, when you're thinking about your donations, I, I don't think that dawns on people that that's a humongous need. We in the county um, are using a portion of our CARES dollars. We just are entering in a partnership with Community Food Bank to purchase 1.4 million diapers and distribute them to our food pantries and to entities like Center for Hope and Safety and, um, you know, other agencies that help women and children. Um, but it, what we're doing is only uh, 1.4 million diapers, which sounds like so much, is only going to last for four months. Um, <laughs> so that's like an ongoing need. And that's an ongoing thing that most people don't realize like, oh, you know, all those travel size shampoos that I just stole out of that hotel room, that's a really great donation. Um, <laughs> you know, not that any of us are traveling or not that any of us are going to hotels and not that any of us steal the, the extra supplies. But you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it is... Um, it, there, there are so many ways of being impactful. And especially like for our kids who are making their mitzvah projects, you know, it, to think of the ways that they can help and, and the way, you know, in, even in a socially distant way to collect things that are impactful and needed. And by the way, help, happy to be a resource person on any of that stuff too. Um, Cause I know, you know, we hear on a weekly basis from our food pantries. And so I always have a barometer of where the need is most profound, where the need is unexpected, where their supplies are falling short. There are some pantries that are very well supported by their community. And Ridgewood SSA is one of them. Um, there are, are pantries that are less well supported. Um, you know, there's the, this amazing food pantry uh, in, in New Milford um, and they are very well supported by Catholic Charities. Whereas the Episcopal Church is not as, as good at, you know, there's no, Catholic Charities arm of the Episcopal Church, and they are serving 250 families a week um, it, from a congregation that is not all that affluent in Teaneck. So, you know, it's, it's very, um, I'm happy to guide and uh, point you in the right direction. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to text me or shoot me an email or, or whatever. I'm, I'm here as a resource. Anybody else has a question? Bob Dworkin looks like he has one. He's just staring at the screen. I'm not sure. All right. Just checking, Bob. <laughs> he's checking at the chat to make sure he's got the uh, phone number down on the website there. That's what he's uh, always looking for. Good things like that. All right. Well, I, I have another question. Sure, go for tomorrow. Oh. Um, thank you again, Tracy. Um, as you go through all of this work and this enormous responsibility, I'm wondering if you have a social worker or a team of social workers who are helping the people in need and also there for you. You need to be nurtured as well and supported in your mind and your heart because you are carrying such a load. And I'm just hoping that there are people who, who are there mm -hmm. for you in this as well as people, uh, people in need. Uh, Tamara, thank you for that and for thinking Bobby made dinner tonight so that you know he is taking off some of the load I, I happen to have first of all a wonderful team um Lucene is you know my right hand my left hand but I also have some from the county executive's office Marissa Togashino who's been amazing um we have this tremendous intern I just got another part-time person um and so we are building a team of support I get a lot of of Ruach, a lot of like, you know, there are so many wonderful people who are on the ground at these pantries. And I think we've also become that, that support system for each other. Um, one of the, the pantry, the head of the pantry in Park Ridge just got COVID and, you know, it's like, how can we help you? How can we support you? You know, like, how can we help you fill in the gaps there? And that's one of the beauties that's coming out of this task force is that, that bond among each other. Um, I, with a lot of these organizations that we do connect people to, do have social workers and do have components of that. I am, you know, I, this is a little divergent, but my biggest worry are communities like Elmwood Park and Garfield that don't really have food pantries. They're doing, the Garfield's doing three times a week emergency food distributions where people drive by 400 people a day, three times a week are driving by to pick up meals that are donated by a community food bank, table to table and HelloFresh. Um, 
that can't go on forever. So how do we move this to something that's sustainable? And more importantly, how do we then connect them? Like I'm trying to get them to hire a social worker, to build a wellness center, to be, you know, to build something that transfers from emergency to like how we move forward. Same thing with Elma Park. They're doing it just once a week, but it's the same concept. You know, I, I mentioned it to the town leadership. They had no idea that there were 725 people in their community who were receiving food stamps and that they were at 10% uh, free lunch and 30% reduced lunch. Like they just, it didn't calculate for them. And so kind of putting together those pieces, connecting corporate part sponsorships and partnerships and how we can make this work. Um, you know, how we can connect some foundational support. You know, we're constantly outreaching. We're about to do an a, a application with an organization called City Green in Clifton, the Berry Foundation, um, where it will, if somebody buys a vegetable with their food stamps, it'll give them a coupon for that same value for the next time. So it incentivizes them to purchase healthier food. And so, these are, you know, we're, we're constantly, we, I joke and Lucine has heard me say this, but like we are building this plane while we're flying it. We are reacting to an emergency while trying to build a sustainable structure going forward. We're um, brainstorming and trying to come up with new ideas all the time. So that's why I, I kind of put it out to you guys that if you have an idea, I am happy to explore it. There is like, you know, there, all ideas are good ideas and we can explore them together and figure out how we can kind of put together this jigsaw puzzle. Yes, tomorrow. I have an idea for you. Okay. <laughs> um, I think you're involved with the Bergen Volunteer Medical Initiative, yeah. BVMI. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if they could be a resource for you because they have all of these wonderful doctors and nurses and practitioners and social, who, workers. And social workers who donate their time. And I'm wondering if there could be some sort of collaboration to mm -hmm. help you. So they're on our task force already. I have uh, Amanda Missy's on my health subcommittee. Um, we are are definitely in this conversation with them. Um, you know, they definitely have an interesting perspective, and they are doing a lot of great work at dealing with the health needs. And they are, you know, and the Berry Foundation has funded a grant for them to study. You know, how, you know. Listen, I'd love to at some point launch a food farm. There's this concept out there called a food pharmacy where if a doctor writes a prescription, if you have high blood pressure or, or um, you know, whatever, they write a prescription for salmon, you can go fill that prescription and there might be Medicaid dollars. So we're researching that or we're, they're part of that conversation. Like there's a lot we're throwing at the wall right now. Um, and, and it's, and it's going to be ultimately like kind of seeing what sticks. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Well, your enthusiasm is contagious and I've, know you for quite a while and it's rarely to see you this excited. I did not realize when I asked you to speak that I would be so fortunate to um, learn so much more and be able to have you share this enthusiasm. And I hope people to support it going forward. Um, because I said, the, this has to, this is not just for this week. It's not a single event. And I hope that we can participate and find a role as a synagogue and a community yeah. to strengthen what you're doing. And you certainly are an enormous resource. Um, abounding with uh, information, energy, and um, ruach. So <laughs> you got the right spirit for it, for sure. And, and this is like the Willa Balsa commercial that we grew up with, right? Like you got to tell two friends and they tell two friends, and so on and so on and so on. And so that's where you guys come in to amplify this, to be the All ambassadors right. and the community and spread the needs. I want to keep the message going as we begin to creep out of our shelters here slowly. Yep. And uh, get everyone uh, getting a vaccine, hopefully soon, if you're uh, of the right age or soon to be everyone. And uh, we can begin to bring ourselves back to some sense of normalcy and help those that need it. Yeah. So I'm thrilled that I was able to coincidentally ask you to speak tonight and share this wonderful information. I know you're always full of information, but this one is, this is really uh, one that was special for me as well. I've recognized this for some time. I want to thank everyone for participating and joining us this evening and taking a little time out of their evening. Lucine, Cracker Jack job, good work. We appreciate that. And uh, I can't, I want to say thank you again, Tracy. And I hope this is not, mm -hmm. hope we'll, we were recording this. We're going to put this on our website. We hope to reprise this again. 
And there Rosalind, you your idea is a great idea. And we're working on that too, of doing micro grants for community gardens to support our food pantries, connecting the dots. I, I, I spoke just recently with the 4-H club about them being part of the solution. We're trying to get our schools to grow food in their greenhouses and, and teach both the science of growing as well as the civics of giving. So like, I, that's a great idea. And, and uh, if you have ideas about how to connect me to certain community gardens, if you're aware of some green teams, shoot me an email because we'll chat. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Really, really well job, well done. And uh, Liz Real and all our community appreciates what you're doing. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, right, guys. Stay safe, stay oh, healthy, okay. mask off, wash your hands. Okay. Thanks, Chris. We'll keep, we'll keep safe. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, have a good night. Bye. Thank you.